Building Docker images or running Docker containers isn't that difficult. But when it comes to deploying containers or containerized apps to the cloud, there are a bunch of options or platforms to choose from. Finding the one that works best for you can be a real headache. And the popular options like Kubernetes or Amazon ECS offer powerful features and scalability, but they come with a steep learning curve and often require dedicated teams to manage your infrastructure. Setting up the clusters, configuring load balancing, managing networking can quickly become time consuming and complex. However, if you are looking for a simpler way to manage your container infrastructure, you should give the AWS AppRunner a try. It is a fully managed AWS service, meaning that AWS takes care of the underlying infrastructure and it is designed to simplify deploying your container applications without all the complexity. And in this video, we'll go over deploying a website as container on AppRunner. We'll start by creating a simple website, containerize it with Nginx, and then push that image to ECR, and then we'll finally deploy it to AppRunner. And we'll set up necessary IAM role and permissions along the way. So I'm gonna switch back to the terminal window and let's get started. Let's start by creating a new project folder. Open it in a code editor. I'm using VS Code here. It's ready. Let's create a simple website, create a folder to hold the website code. Now inside that folder, let's create an HTML file. Name it index.html. Here is some simple HTML I've copied and I hope it's straightforward to follow. It has a title and a bit of styling a heading, and a spot for a banner image. I'm gonna grab the image and put it in the same folder as our HTML file. And that's it for the index.html file or the page. Now, quick note, we are using dev container here to keep our development environment nice and tidy. The dev container here gives us the Docker and the AWS CLI all packaged up inside a container. If you've already got those installed in your machine, not inside a dev container, that's perfectly fine too. And you don't have to use dev container. But if you're new to dev container, I suggest you give it a try. It can really simplify your local development workflow. I have made some short tutorials on dev containers for developers and DevOps. Please check those, the links are in the description. For now, let's rebuild the project inside this container. All right, that's complete. Our project is open. And now we are ready to containerize our website application. We need a Docker file to start with. Here is a simple one. And in this, we are using Nginx as the base image. And then here we copy the index.html file and the banner image into the correct folder, the HTML folder inside the Nginx container. And that's it for the Docker file. Now let's build the Docker image. In the terminal window, cd into the website folder. Now let's run the Docker build command. There's one thing to note here is that if your machine's architecture is different from the target machine, like mine, M1 Mac in my local development, you will need to specify the target platform to ensure compatibility when you deploy to AppRunner. This is because the default architecture might not work on AppRunner. Let's skip the details of platform architectures for now, but it is something worth learning more about later. If you have any questions on this, please let me know. Now let's keep going, run the docker build command. This should be real quick. And there we go, it's done. The Docker has built our image and the next website. Now let's push our Docker image to a registry. We are gonna use Amazon ECR for this. I already have one repository here and we're gonna create a new one for our Nginx website images. We could create one here on the web UI, but instead let's create one from the command line interface. The command is AWS ECR create repository the repository name. There we go. It has created a new repository. And here we can see it on the UI as well. Now that we have the image built and the container repository is also ready, we need to tag our Docker image, Nginx website image, with a URL of the ECR repository. This will tell Docker where to push the image. Let's also give it a tag, v1, to keep track of versions. To actually push the image, we need to authenticate Docker, the client, with our ECR registry. And that will be a two-step process. First, we'll retrieve a temporary login password from ECR using AWS CLI. AWS ECR get login password and provide the region. And then we'll pipe that password into Docker login command. Notice that the username for the ECR is always AWS. 
and the password comes from here and we specify our registry URL here. And there we go, the Docker is now authenticated for ECR. Now let's push our Docker image to ECR repository. We'll use Docker push command followed by the ECR repository URL, including the tag v1. While the image is being uploaded, let's check in the management console. We shouldn't see our new tag or image just yet. All right, looks like the Docker push command has finished. Let's refresh the image tags list. And there it is, our v1 tag is now in ECR. That takes care of our Docker image. Now on to the final step, deploying our website on the app runner. Currently, I don't have any services deployed on AppRunner. So let's create our first service to run the Nginx website container. Again, we'll be using AWS CLI for this instead of the web UI or the management console. A simple reason is that I like creating repeatable commands, scripts, and infrastructure code as opposed to doing things on the management console. Now let's keep going, create a new folder for all the AWS stuff. Now, before we create a service in AppRunner, we need to set up an IAM role for the AppRunner. The AppRunner requires certain permissions to run our container app. Let's create that role first and then we can attach the necessary permissions. Creating a role involves a trust policy like this one here that allows AppRunner to assume the role. So let's create the role. AWS IAM create role, the role name demo app runner role and the, the path for the file containing the trust policy. This command creates the IAM role with the trust policy. This means app runner service can use this role to access AWS resources. But it doesn't give the app runner the right permissions yet, such as permissions to pull or download Docker images from ECR. Let's solve that for which we'll create another policy. Here is another policy document that grants ECR read permissions that we can attach to the role we created. Let's create that policy first. AWS IAM create policy, the policy name, demo app runner ECR policy, and the policy document, the path to the file. All right, the policy has been created. And now let's attach this policy to our IAM role so that when app runner uses the role, it has the permissions to pull Docker image from ECR and run. And the command is AWS IAM attach role policy, the role name, demo app runner role, and the ARN of the policy we created, this one here. And that's it. Our IAM role is now created and configured with the necessary permissions for the app runner. The IAM role is ready for our app runner. So now the final step, creating the app runner service. I'm going to define the service in a YAML file. You could also use tools like Terraform, CDK or CloudFormation, but I think this is a simple way to get started. Here is our service definition. We give it a name, demo nginx service. And under the image repository, we specify the full URL of our Docker image from ECR. We set the container port to 80, which is the default Nginx port. And under the authentication configuration, we provide the ARN of the IAM role we created earlier that we want the app runner service to assume. And finally, we configure the instance size. We'll use the smallest possible CPU and memory configuration for now. And that's everything we need for our service definition. Now let's quickly check on the management console under the app runner. As you can see, there are no services running yet. And now let's go back to the terminal and create our new app runner service. AWS app runner create service and provide the service YAML file. And this command takes the service definition from our YAML file and start the creation process. We get a response with some details about the service, but the service is not ready yet. Let's check the app runner on the web UI. It is currently in progress. Let's navigate to the service details. Here we can verify all the configurations we specified in the YAML file, including the image repository, IAM role and instance size. And at the top, we have the service URL, which we're gonna use in a bit. And here we can also see the service and container logs. The container and service should be ready by now. 
back in the terminal window if we list the app runner services we should see that our service status as running let's refresh the service page on the web console and yes it confirms that the service is running finally let's go ahead and open this service url in the browser and there it is our nginx website is up and running on app runner that's about it as you can see, the AppRunner makes it incredibly easy to deploy simple websites. But it is not limited to just websites. You can also use it for APIs, microservices, and wide range of other applications. If you're planning to use it for production workloads, there are some additional considerations like scaling to handle production workload, using custom domains, and implementing security best practices. If you'd like to dive deeper into these topics, let me know in the comments below or reach out. And if you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Sharing it with your network would be a great help to me and to other developers who might be interested in learning the app runner. I try to create content that's valuable for both DevOps, cloud engineers and application developers. So your feedback and support is very important to me. And one more thing, I have a Kubernetes course that if you think will help you, please check it out. And the link is in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.